In this video here, I'll be looking at how to create these little indicators here, these various indicators that can sit above uh, a columned cluster chart. So in this example here, we've got the cost and the budget, and above it here, we've got the variance between the cost and the budget with a little indicator to see if it's above or below, and also some conditional formatting. Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. So in this video here, we're going to be creating these little variances here. Now, why is that something that might be might be useful? Well, if you're one of the, one of the I guess the usability features of a graph is to try and take away the need for people to calculate figures. Okay, and this is one that I've come across a few times where, yeah, we've got the variance here and it is normally pretty easy to see which one's above and which one's below. Um, but this is going to tell us exactly if it is above or below. So you can kind of, your eyes drawn to this one here and by how much. So somebody doesn't need to calculate that. There's not additional cognitive load to go and calculate that value. You can see it straight off the chart, but you've also got the context of the budget versus the, the actual cost for that particular month. So to do that, I'm going to talk you through the, the steps that I used. Okay, so we've got this visualization here. It's a, a line and a clustered column chart. Now, it needs to be a line and the clustered column chart because we're going to use that line as the the mechanism for adding in the variance here between the cost and the budget. So let's go and look at the measure that I've created that we're going to add to the line. Okay, so I've created this measure here. It's called max of cost or budget plus 10%. So why is it we want to, to have, have that in there? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a data point that's going to be 10% above whichever the cost or the the budget, whichever one's highest. And it's going to sit as a line because it's going to be on the same actual axis, the, the same y-axis here. And it's going to sit above whichever one of these is highest, okay? So we're going to find the max of either the cost or the, the maintenance cost or the maintenance budget. And then we're going to add 10% to that, and that's going to be this measure here. So then we're going to use, or we've set this up, so there's a dynamic um, format here. So the dynamic formatting allows us to dynamically format the text that's actually displayed as a data label for that particular data point. So what it allows us to do is place a data point on the chart, which is 10% above either the cost or the budget, whichever one's highest but display something completely different. In this example here, we're going to actually force it to be 10% above whichever one of these is highest, so it's going to sit above here. But we're actually going to display not that value, but we're going to display the difference between the cost and the budget with that indicator, and then we'll add some conditional format and etc. Okay, so that's the, the kind of approach that we're going to take here. So if we go into this measure here, and then we're going to go into the format here, Okay, so here's the, the code that's going to sit in this format panel here, our format section. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to format the, the output of the total cost versus budget difference. So this, this is basically a measure that calculates the difference between the total cost and the budget for each month. So it's basically this minus this, and it gives us a value there. Um, and then we're going to format that. So it's a format function. We're going to format that as a pounds and basically to one decimal place and in thousands. Now, if you're interested in learning more about this format function here and, and some of this, the um, the strings that you can use to format the text, then I'll leave a link below to some resources. Next, we're gonna go and calculate the result. So we're gonna use a switch statement and it's gonna select whichever one of these is true for each one of these instances here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to check to see if the maintenance cost is equal to zero. Now, if it's in the future here, or the future according to this data set anyway, then the maintenance cost is going to be zero. So we're actually just going to return a blank string. Okay, so it's not a blank, it's a blank string. And that's important because this format code needs to return a string. If the um, total cost versus budget difference is greater than zero, so in the example here, we've got the cost is greater than the budget here, then that's going to be a upward arrow, which is going to be just a, um, a character and again I'll leave a, a, a link below to these characters so you can go and copy and paste them in here then we're going to have a plus and then we're going to append that to the, the difference here and then if the if that's not true if the next check it's going to make is if the budget value or the total cost uh, variance basically is below the budget 
Okay, so in instances here, we've spent less than the budget. This one here, this one here, etc. Then it's going to be below, and then we're going to put the variance here. And it's already going to have a minus in it, so we don't need to put a minus there. And then we're going to return the result. We're just going to, again, append this this here to make it or force it to be a string that gets returned. Um, I pr we probably don't need it in this example here because we're using this format here, but I'll put it in anyway because it does create some sort of weird results sometimes if it doesn't return a string. And that should be it. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a line with this measure in it. So we're going to go in here and we're going to add it to here. Okay, so we can see we've got some bits and pieces here that's been added in, so let's tidy this up. So we're going to go to lines, and what we need to do is just make sure, now I've, I've covered this before, but what will happen with you is this will actually display a line. So we need to make sure the stroke length is zero. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these backgrounds. So let's go into data labels. And then we're going to go into this data label here. We're going to leave it on, that's fine. But we want the colour to be... We'll come back to the colour in a minute, but let's just leave it... This is put black for just now. The data labels here are going to be none. Don't remember to put that in. Okay, so now we can see it's appearing here. Next, we're going to change the background. We're going to switch off the background. Okay, so something isn't quite right is happening here, so let's just go and investigate this. Okay, so we can see now um, the issue was that I wasn't multiplying that by a high enough sum here. So I've multiplied, I've changed this to be the max value, max of the cost or the, the maintenance budget times 20%, or so 120%. So that just takes it clear here, and we can see it's, um, it's well above that value now. Okay, so let's minimize this and we're going to go and do a little bit more tidying up of this chart here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change this name here. So let's actually open that back up again. And we're going to double click on here and I'm going to call this Variance. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to change that to be some conditional format in here. Okay, so the conditional format I want on these labels is basically to highlight that as red and highlight the other ones or de-highlight the other ones to be like a, a lighter grey colour. Okay, so here's the, the conditional format we're going to use. So we've got a switch statement. So if the total cost versus budget difference is greater than zero, we're going to use this colour here, which is like a red colour. And then if it's less than or equal to zero, we're going to use this colour here, which is like a light grey kind of colour. So let's go in and we'll apply that to these data labels. Okay, so we're going to go to data labels and we're going to select the variance. And we're going to change this line position here to be above. Okay, now I actually think that was more related to the issue we had where it was neat against these. It was because the line or the, the value here was putting some above or some below the line. So actually, if I go back to the the actual original measure now and change that back to 10%, I think that should work. Okay, so it's taking it a little bit closer there, so we can play with that. So that's something I forgot to mention there is put it above the line, make sure that the, the placement is above the line. Now the line is switched off, so you can't see the line, but it's there. Okay, so let's go to the values. And at the moment they're black, but we're gonna use this conditional format in here. And I'm going to go into field value and I'm going to add in that conditional formatting for the cost versus budget status color. Okay, so now we can see that we've kind of de highlighted these values here. Now it might be that you want to kind of keep those highlighted, but typically what I would like to see is really clearly here's my issues here. Okay, kind of get lost a little bit with these colours here. Maybe I need to choose slightly different colours here, but what is clear is that I can hone in directly on here and I can see that for that month there, for February, um, the variance was plus 1.9k. Okay. Right, so let's go and change this here because I want that to be red as well. So I'm going to go back to the line. And in here, we've got this line here. Now I'm going to change it to be the same color as this. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to more colors. And I'm just going to paste that color in that we used in the conditional formatting. 
So that's just to help us understand that that is the variance there. Okay, so now we've got um, a column chart that's got a budget and a cost, a cost and a budget. And we've got these neat little variance labels here that tell us if it's above or below. And we've conditionally formatted those labels so we can clearly see the ones that are above. So hopefully you found this useful. If you did, it's always much appreciated if you could give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, then click the subscribe button and you'll get a notification whenever I publish a new video, which is around about every couple of weeks. Okay, thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.